you think I'd be better at this by now? No, still suck at intros, much better at the meat of it. Today we're gonna to talk about paints. There's a bunch of different kinds of paints that fashion illustrators use. So uh, again, I know, big surprise, right? I'm not gonna be able to fit it all in one video. My whole thing being, I like being thorough. I also don't think anyone wants to sit through an hour of me talking about paints. So I'm gonna break it up. Today I'm gonna to talk about the ones that get used the most often. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about some things that are kinda of new to me, and I have to tinker around with those before I teach you, cause I like to learn things before I teach things. Funny how that works. Now, these things, all the things that I'm gonna go over today are some form of watercolor, like water-based or something that can be mixed with water, because I don't know fashion illustrators who work with oils or acrylics to do fashion illustrations. Like I know how, well, okay, I know the mechanics of oil painting. I would never say I'm very good at it, uh, but I haven't picked up oil paints in, uh, we're gonna go over gouache, drawing inks, regular standard watercolor, and watercolor pencils. Do, 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 do. First of all, let's start with the things that you're gonna need. Obviously, you're gonna need the actual paints themselves. You know, here's some pencils. You know, drawing ink, this is a tube of gouache, this is a tube of watercolor. You're gonna need paper. This is 140 pound cold pressed paper. You can tell it's got some texture to it. I'm not gonna go in depth in, I'm not gonna go into depth, uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about paper because I have a whole video on paper and I'll drop the link in the info box. You're going to need a palette. This is just a plastic palette. I got a dark star for a couple bucks. I like it because it's got so many holes. I love the holes. Just a plain old jar for water. There is such a thing as watercolor medium. Uh, it's like a viscous, gooey substance that you mix with your paints instead of water. And, uh, you know, I've never used it before in my life. And maybe I will go get some and try it out and report back to you in my second video on, on uh, paints. But water works just fine for me. If you are having a problem with streaking or clotting or anything like that and you're just getting frustrated, you might want to try the medium and see if that works better for you. Brushes. One of these days I'm going to show you why I have a toothbrush, but trust me, I have not actually brushed my teeth with these. I have a bunch. My main brushes are these Authentic Sable round brushes in three different sizes, four, eight, and 12. I bought these, I bought these in college and college was a long time ago for me. But because they're really good quality and I take good care of my things, they have lasted me this long. These are the ones that I use the most often. I have a couple of these flat brushes. These, this is called the flat shader. Okay. Sometimes when I want to do corners, really sharp edges. I have some really small brushes, some really, really small brushes. I also have a couple of these kind of crusty, old, stiff, bristly brushes. This is a cheap, bristly oil brush. Oil brushes usually have super long handles, but I cut this off. I use this to create textures, and I'll show you a little demo of that later. I don't really like synthetic bristle brushes. This is a synthetic, um, and synthetic bristles don't hold as much water as real animal hair brush bristles, and they flick because they're plastic, you know? The sable is soft, the plastic, it flicks, and you might be not seeing a big difference right now, but it's one of those things that as you paint a lot, 
you'll start recognizing it in the behavior with your hand and with your painting and so forth. So now let's talk about the paints themselves. These are gouache. This is my favorite brand, the Winsor & Newton Designers Gouache. I don't always have a favorite brand for everything, but this is my favorite brand. I have used some other brands, but a lot of them come watered down. And the real reason that I love gouache so much is because I can use it transparent and I can use it opaque. And so if it comes watered down, then I can't use the gouache opaque and therefore it loses the coolness of the gouache. Things get crusty. Don't use your teeth to open these. Gouache is great because you can use this like a watercolor super sheer. And you can also use it with barely any water at all. And get just this incredibly intense, beautiful color. So in just one tube of paint, you can get a full range of colors. You can get that medium color. You can add some more water to get lighter pinks, something really dark in here. And this is how I shadow my clothes and my illustrations. If you've watched any of my rendering videos, you know that I prefer to shadow with a darker version of the color and not with grays. And so what I would do is I would, you know, paint my garment in the color and then I would take a more opaque version of that color and use that to create shadows. And then the beauty of paint being you can kind of blend that edge a little bit more than you could with marker. Woo! I love pink. Now, I drew this pencil line underneath the paint here because as opaque as gouache can get, and it's more opaque than any other watercolor, you're still gonna see the underdrawing. I mean, except maybe if you were painting with like navy or black, even a dark value color like this Rose Tyrion, you're gonna see the underdrawing. So that doesn't give you permission to just scribble whatever crap underneath. The second one I wanna go over is this drawing ink. This is Higgins Drawing Ink, and I have this because I have not tried any other drawing ink brands. If you have and had had really good experience with them, you know, drop me a comment. Maybe I'll go check out a tube or a pot or whatever. So I'm trying to do a color to color comparison. So this is the Higgins Red Violet. Now when I use drawing inks, I use dye-based or waterproof drawing inks. I don't use pigment-based inks because pigment-based inks tend to sit just on top of the paper. They don't really sink in. So here is my drawing ink in the closest color. I mean, that's really good match. And this is about as opaque as I can get it. This is as dark as it'll go. And if I want anything darker, I would actually have to mix it with black or red or something darker, but that will also change the tone of it of course, you can go lighter by adding some water. And again, you can, you know, color in your garment and then use a darker, higher opacity paint to create shadows. The color is beautiful. Some of you may be thinking, if you don't get a bigger range of colors in your drawing inks, then what's the point of using drawing inks? Okay, good point. 
Drying inks are a little bit easier to work with. They're less streaky. You notice how easily I created this clear patches, whereas this, you see the streaking. You would have to work with it a little bit more to smooth things out. Because you do have to add water to work with it. You Every time you work with wash, you kind of have to keep manipulating and figure out how much water to add to get the color to get the consistency that you want whereas drying inks are liquid in the bottle and so you can use it straight out of the bottle and get to work right away so yeah you kind of need to decide on what you're looking for you know, gouache has the versatility and ink has the con ease of consistency Here's another difference between ink and gouache. Here, I was able to pick up some of the gouache off the paper without completely destroying the texture of the paper. Here, I am literally rubbing off balls of paper and I have yet to clear the ink. The ink is dye-based. It just soaks right up into that paper and is like, I'm never gonna let you go, you and me together forever ink and paper always together i don't know if that's a real song it's totally not whereas gouache you can very carefully lift some if you make a mistake not that i would recommend you trying to erase an entire top i just mean like if you went outside your pencil line on a little corner of your blouse or something if you really wanted to clean that up you could but not with ink and so pick your poison now we've got your traditional watercolor. Yes, I'm sticking to pink. If you don't like pink, I feel sorry for you that you don't understand the joy of pink. This is a Winsor Newton Cotman watercolor in the tube. I don't have a preferred brand for watercolors. Winsor & Newton, this brand, they have a couple of different lines of watercolor in the tube. The Cotman series is their more student-friendly priced Watercolors, I've had no problems with these, so maybe you want to start here. Now, watercolor typically comes in the palettes full of all the little, um, I don't know, little dry pans of color that you activate with water, or it can come in these tubes of wetter paint. You know, watercolor artists, they fancy the gorgeous, well-used, dirty watercolor palette as some sort of like filthy, gorgeous badge of honor, and that's awesome. But for designers, I don't recommend that. I recommend the tube so that you can easily mix a pot of a color and use it repeatedly for the same fabric. Because if you're doing a lineup, and you're using the same fabric over and over and over again, like you do in a well merchandised collection, you're gonna just want that pot of uh, color to keep painting the same fabrics instead of mixing a little bit in your pot over and over and over again and getting inconsistent results. This one is a little bit more red. It's a, a permanent rose. Yeah, it's a little bit more watery, so I'm never gonna get the opacity, the solid, the solid opacity of this gouache. It's a little bit in between the ink and the gouache in terms of consistency. It's more watery, so you don't have to work with it quite as much to get started, but you know, it's very nice to work with. It's very pretty. And again, it doesn't quite have that opacity, so you can't get quite the darkest shadows but you can definitely create some shadows in here and get those soft leads and blends. These are watercolor pencils and they look like color pencils until you read the label. And this one is not labeled. 
I don't know why that's so funny, but this one's not labeled because it came in a tin. But these are watercolor pencils, and you know, some people, they use watercolor pencils instead of color pencils because they think that the color is much more vibrant. And I mean, I guess that's fine if that's what you really want to do. Um, I've heard people use watercolor pencil because there's less of a chance of wax bloom. I guess this is where I would insert a definition of wax bloom. And you know, if you want to know more about color pencils, I have a whole video on that. So I'll drop a link in the info box on that. So to go take a look. But I like using watercolor pencils as watercolor. So here it is, colored here, looks just like color pencil. And then you add some water and it becomes paint. And just like any other watercolor, the more water you add, the lighter the color becomes. The great thing about watercolor pencil for me is you don't have to choose one or the other. You can add just a little bit of water and you can create these different textures that's in between wet and dry. And so when you get these fuzzy, grainy, yet wet textures, you know, these are really great for things like chunky knits where you want the solid color but you also want a softer texture. The biggest drawback to these is a lot of the time the dry color doesn't match up perfectly with the wet color. You can see here that the dry color is a lot more burgundy brownish and even when I don't add that much water it immediately becomes so much more purple, more violet. Here you see this very dark blue on the duller side. It looks like there's a lot of black in here. And even with adding just a little bit of water, it becomes this really bright phthalo blue. As you get more familiar with using watercolor pencils, you can take those things into consideration and kind of work around those, but you need to be aware that this is the drawback to using watercolor pencil. And it's not true for every color, and it's not true for every color of every brand. You know, you gotta find your brand. These are favorite castells, and I enjoy them. A lot of my students use the Prismacolor brand, and they've had a lot of success with those as well. I'm gonna tell you right now, I get really jealous when one of my super rich students comes in, and she's got like a 200 color set of watercolor pencils, I'm like, when you have paints like these, it's really easy to mix a million colors using the tubes, but the watercolor pencil, it is a little bit more difficult to mix the colors, and so having the 200 colors of watercolor pencils is really nice. If someone has a million colors of gouache, not jealous, because, I mean, I teach color theory. I know how to mix paints. You can still mix watercolor pencils. There are a couple of different ways. You can draw right on your paper and color the two colors and then blend them together with your water and you get this purple. And again, this is really best for something where you want the result to be a little bit uneven or you can take your mixed pot of paint, pick it up, and start painting something else. And you can use this watercolor paper as your palette. So when to choose paint over marker? Because yeah, sometimes it can be a pain in the butt to pull all these things out and get all your equipment together, wait for things to dry in between steps. Like, when would you wanna do that? There are a lot of areas in which paints have an advantage over markers. Number one, it just looks really, really nice. It just, it just looks nice. 
Number two, you can mix colors. You know, anytime you want to get another color for marker, you either have to figure out how to layer existing colors together to get the right color, or you have to go out and buy another color. Layering the colors of marker, sometimes that works, but that can get really tedious. With paints, you only need a handful and you can mix the colors. Like I only have five watercolors and I have maybe 10 gouache colors. And I just mix everything. Whereas I, I, I have something close to 150 markers and I always seem to need to get another one for new projects. So yeah, paints can be a little bit expensive, but they're more cost efficient in the long run because you just keep using them over and over and over again. Whereas markers, they're expensive and then yet you have, they dry out and you have to go buy another one for every single color. Blending, blending is awesome. And a lot, more difficult to achieve. So anytime you want to do anything with any kind of gradients or you want to create a less graphic, just an overall softer look, paints are going to be your best bet. My favorite thing to do with paint is wet on wet technique. Wet on wet technique is where you wet your paint wet your paper before you add your paint and so that the water will carry and bleed and splotch things for you. This is really great for like watery flower prints, leopard prints, um, tie-dye, things where you want soft blends like denim, if you were to just do the same technique I just showed you on dry paper, all you would end up are these dots. But when you do it on the wet paper, oops, that's a lot of wet. You know, depending on how wet your paper is, right? So you can create different techniques with how wet your paper is, what color you have underneath, you know, how wet or dry the paint is that you use on top, all kinds of fun stuff. The important thing to keep in mind is paint will go wherever the water is. So when you are first starting by laying down the water, you gotta keep it inside your pencil lines. If you ever want to erase, you just dry your brush and pick stuff up with your dry brush because water wants to go where it isn't. So you're going to pick that up. Water's going to get sucked up into the brush and squeeze it out and blend. Another thing I like to do with paint, or actually more specifically with wash, is to paint light color things on a dark background. I'm gonna take my opaque white wash with as little water as possible, and I'm going to draw designs. And so you can have fabrics where, you know, there's a lot of little white polka dots all over black. Can you imagine trying to draw a million white polka dots and then take a black marker or paint and paint around each dot? And ain't nobody got time for that. The easiest thing to do would just be to take some opaque white wash and just paint white dots on your dark ground. Here's white ink. And this is waterproof white drawing ink. And I get mixed results. Like a lot of the time, they'll be wet, opaque. And then they'll dry a lot more clear. 
but that's an option too. And then another technique I enjoy with paint is to use it dry with a crusty brush like this. Like take the gouache and create different feathery, furry textures. Half wet, half dry look is also very cool. When you go get your colors, here's what I would recommend. I would recommend you get a black and a white, whether you get watercolor or gouache, and that you get a hot pink color like this, yellow, and a bright blue. And you're like, don't you mean red, yellow, and blue, the primary colors, so that you can mix all the other colors? Yeah, no. Do you ever wonder why your printer has CMYK and mixes all the colors. Let me give you a really fast color theory lesson. Okay? We have two basic color systems. Okay? One that we use for pigments, anything that gets put on paper or canvas. Paints, uh, inks that go into your printer and print out your color printouts. Or you have light, which are like JPEGs that you use for websites or slideshows, movies, all of that. Okay? When you're formatting things in Photoshop or Illustrator or what have you for websites, you want to use the RGB format. That is how you mix lights together to get the best colors. If you want something for printout, you want CMYK color mode because that's the way the printouts look the best. When you talk to printers, they're going to say you need to format your file CMYK because that's how you're going to get the best color match with our printers. Along that vein, you want to get paint colors as close to CMYK as possible, C for cyan, M for magenta, Y for yellow, K for black, and mix those colors to get your optimum colors. Look how beautiful, bright, and clean those colors look. Mix all three to get browns. And obviously, you guys can do a better job. I'm just working really fast to get my point across here. Look how gorgeous those colors are. And I didn't even have to try very hard. And here's some browns. Yeah, brown is basically dark orange. On the note of mixing colors, always, always have a scrap piece of paper whenever you're painting. And your scrap paper should always be the exact same paper as your final. And there's no point in testing on gray paper or 90 pound hot press paper if your final paper is 140 pound cold press paper or testing on you know, watercolor paper when your final is going to be on a uh, illustration board or what have you. Different papers, they react to the colors differently. It all looks differently. It takes different opacities. It just, everything is different. So if you're going to go buy one sheet of paper at a time because it's for a special project, make sure you get two so that you can play around with the paper first. One last little bit about paints. When you are shopping for your paints in these tubes, these or the gouaches, 
the pricing is different for each series, even within the brand and the title. You see here where it says series one, and you see here where it says series four. These are the same brand, the same line, the Windsor Newton Designer Squash, but there's four series, and it's true for a lot of other brands of paint. That means these series mean different prices. These paints are all different prices, even if it's the same item, because of the ingredients used to make each color. So this cadmium red is a series four, which means it's going to be the most expensive out of all of them. And the series one is the least expensive. So make sure you're checking the prices and what series the color you're picking is before you go to the register. And you may be thinking, Zoe, do I really need to get a series four color? No. When you're first getting started, you don't need something this expensive. Go ahead and just get a few of the series one and test them out and really get to know these gouaches before you start spending a lot of money. That is a whole lot of information. This video I think is plenty long. I'm sure you guys have some questions. Drop me a comment and I will address them in my next video. Until then, get started, practice, watch some other videos, practice those, have some fun, you know, all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time.